OK, so before we make the rack, let's just recap on what we had to start with. So here is a, an assembly I made earlier, the rack and pinion. We've got a very, very tight tooth profile with no backlash, and it's based on an involute gear profile. So we've already made the pinion or the gear. And now we're going to concentrate in this section on the rack. So we have some base geometry. And we're going to add it to a folder and we're going to name that pinion. And all this was modeled in the previous section. So we're turning off, turning on the sketches that we made previously, and we're turning off the solid geometry because we're going to use this to help us build our rack tooth profile. So we get a front plane and we're going to sketch. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a box. going to take a line and going to add some dividing geometry. We're going to take off the vertical constraints, make the center line construction, make the part symmetrical so we can move these lines around. So then we want to take the line and make it collinear with the center line. OK, and then we're going to take this geometry down. And we've got what's starting to look like a tooth profile. We need some more geometry. So this is going to be our um, meshing pitch line. So this line is meshing with the pitch circle. And now we need to construct the root of the tooth, which will be the module times 1.25. So that's the very root of the tooth. And from our imaginary send pitch line, We'll create another dimension. This will give us our addendum, which is the module. So it equals a global variable of the module. This gives us three. So we're looking here at the addendum and the addendum. We now need to use our pressure angle. So we create another dimension, equal global variables pressure angle. So if it's confusing where this information is coming from, you need to refer back to the previous section in this tutorial. So let's go tangent and we've got a meshing gear tooth. Now you might be asking why this isn't an involute. We only need one involute. And that is on the and that is on the pinion. The rack doesn't tend to be an involute. So now we're just going to create some surrounding geometry. And it's going to become clear why we're doing this very soon. But basically we're going to create an array in a minute. And this is going to link the various sections of the array to form the rack. So the width is very important. And this is going to be based on the circular pitch. So at the moment, we've got an arbitrary dimension of 11.2. We need to replace this with an equation. So this is equals the pitch circle times pi. divided by the number of teeth. 
and this was a global variable, number of teeth, which we input at the top in the equations section. And it, this works at 9.42. So we go back into the sketch and we've got 9.42. So we've, we've transferred that, that equation into this sketch. So let's just make this root into um, construction geometry. And now we're ready to extrude. So let's turn on the solid that we had previously and we're going to match up. We're going to make the rack the same width. So extruded boss up to surface. We're not going to merge. We're going to go up to this surface, which we just made pink. And we've got a part of our rack. Let's just change it to blue. So we're going to create a linear pattern. There's not going to be any control on this linear pattern, but we need to um, we need to create create something to work with. So linear pattern. We're going to take our direction, and we need some geometry in line. So let's take this line. This is a good good line to use. We'll just leave leave it as 20 instances. We'll leave the base dimension at 10, although we know it shouldn't be 10. And we're going to the feature is the solid geometry that we had there. And let's go OK. It's not going to work out. It's not going to link up. But we can fix this by using our control equations. So right click, manage equations. Let's go and find those two dimensions we've just added. So we've got 10 mil and 20 instances. We don't want it to be 10. We want it to match up to that equation we just input, which was 9.42. We can change the number of teeth. So let's add a new global variable. So let's, let's say number of rack teeth, just to give us an extra layer of control as a global variable. We'll make this 30. So the number, the instances, let's change that. We don't input 30. Let's say equals global variable number of rack teeth. OK. So it's alarmed out. So we need to go in and we just need to let it um, recalculate. So the links have been made. Let's say OK. Something not, we're not happy with in the geometry. We need to select the right bodies. We don't need to select the circular pattern. Deselect, select the right body. Check everything. Press OK. And, it, and you can see that the geometry that, that we wanted to merge, merge with has merged. Now, we've not used the um, two thread. So we're going to add a fillet. Let's make this any value, 0.4 again. Uh, and we need to pick elements of the rack. So what we've done, we've just gone back in the history uh, to before the pattern, added the rad, gone into equations, find that dimension 0.4, it's going to be very close to the bottom, equal global variables, tooth radius, 0.2. So it's matched up to our global variable you can see at the top. So we've added our added our fillet, reveal the pattern. It's alarmed out because there's an extra piece of geometry been added. So we select the fillet. Fillet's already selected, but we also need to create, add the boss extrude. So we've got both features and we've made a pattern out of both features and that's given us our rack back again. Okay, so the geometry, you can see we've got the geometry. We've got all the base geometry we need. Let's add this to a folder. And at the moment, everything here is modeled 
in a part. We need to transfer this into assembly and that we will do in the next section. Okay, so let's start to put together our assembly. We've already modeled in this master template file our rack and our pinion, but it's not going to move. This is a part and we've basically just created some reference geometry. So we've got two solids, we've got a circular pattern, we've got a linear pattern, and we're going to rename them rack and pinion. There are lots of ways that you can assemble these parts. I'm just going to show you one method. So we're going to delete one of the solids. We're getting rid of the pinion. And that leaves us with the rack. And by doing it this way, I can keep the sketch geometry that, I, that was generated and this gives us something to match up to. So we go file, save as, save as rack. This is a new part. So then let's go back into body delete, edit, remove the pinion, delete the rack. So now the rack goes and we're left with the pinion. So now we can save this part. Just make sure we turn on the right geometry because if we can use this geometry to link up. So file, save as, we'll name this file pinion. And we'll save as a copy. Okay, so now we've got two parts to put into an assembly. We now need to start considering starting our assembly. So let's just get rid of this part. File, new, assembly. And let's find the parts that we've made. So let's add the pinion first. We won't add the rack yet. Let's just constrain this part as we want. So at the moment it's um it's fixed. And that's denoted by the F in the brackets. But we need to we need to make it float. So right click float. We've got some geometry for um, pinning it where we want it. We created an axis earlier. So this is a rotation axis. So let's make this axis to the origin. So we're going to the origin of the assembly, select, rotation axis, select. It's a coincidence. And then we'll make the two front planes as so. And that gives us our constraining geometry. So we can rotate this gear or pinion and it's not going to go anywhere. It's constrained in every other direction. So now we input the rack. So insert component rack. And we need to constrain again the front planes. This time the front plane of the rack against the assembly front plane. So you don't want it to move. Now we need to match up to the sketch of the pitch circle from the pinion. So before we can use the two top planes to make this happen. So here you can see I've mated the two top planes and this will cause an intersection between the pitch circle and the corresponding horizontal line. On the rack. So let's zoom in. And as I move these parts, you can see that these that line and the circle are going to interact. So we're going to create some mates now. So let's just mate temporarily with a tangent the uh, the teeth in position. This is just to get them in the right position. 
and we can see everything's meshed. So we just use the tangent mate just to kind of stick things in place. You can see, see the tangent. Let's turn it off because everything's in position now and we don't want it permanently there. Create an actual mate and it's going to be an, a mechanical mate. And there is actually in SolidWorks a rack and pinion mate. So we need to pick the pitch diameter, which is the pitch circle. So we pick some geometry. So we first we select the pinion gear. Or first we select the rack and we select that equivalent of the pitch circle. And then we go to the pinion and we select that sketch of the pitch circle and we're basing this around the pinion pitch diameter which was 96 millimeters we can reverse this let's just check what we've got at the moment so let's just rotate move the parts and they're going in different directions so we've got we've got the interaction we need but it's all working in reverse. So we can go back into the rack mate. First turn back on the tangents. This just gives us some kind of control just to get everything back where it was started. Turn the off, the pan tangent goes off. We go back into the rack and pinion mate and we reverse it. Now let's move the parts again. And let's see what we've got. And that's it. This is the assembly that we started with at the very start as the example in this tutorial. We have a rack and pinion based on an involute tooth profile and we have no backlash. There's loads of ways you can have backlash. There's some very, very formal ways. And we'll we'll look at this in a backlash in a future video. But for now, here is a working rack and pinion.